Hello and welcome to the Eating Disorder Therapist podcast. This is a podcast to help you find peace with food and overcome disordered eating. And I'm Harriet Frew, aka the Eating Disorder Therapist. And I'm so excited to share with you all kinds of stories, tips, information and guest interviews to help you on your journey in finding peace with food. So thank you so much for listening today. Now today it's me again on the podcast, no guests this time. But what I want to talk about today is to share three more personal recovery secrets with you. Um, Because I did an episode um, a couple of weeks ago where I talked about some of my recovery secrets. And this has been a very popular episode which has been downloaded a lot and I've had some like helpful feedback on. So I thought I would do another one for you. So just to say as well, of course, that my recovery is going to be different from yours. Everybody has their own unique path and journey to walk. So I hope you'll find this interesting and hopefully inspiring, but also it's really important that you think about what are the things that are relevant for you and that are right for you and to walk your own journey with recovery. So what am I going to share today? So I'm going to share three more personal recovery secrets. And I'm going to kick off with number one, which is caring less about external validation about thinness. Now, when you're not feeling great in your self-esteem, clawing onto the fact that you're thinner than your peers can be a desperate attempt to feel better and boost self-worth. And this often isn't really like a kind of conscious thing you've decided to do, but you can kind of find yourself in this horrible place. And it's so wrong that thinness is equated with superiority, you know, all rooted from diet culture on so many levels. Um, You know, it's seen as kind of self-control, success, all those things which are really, really so wrong and have led us down so many unhelpful paths. But this whole kind of thinness superiority thing is something that can linger permanently permanently in the air like the elephant in the room, and it can be so seductive. So if you're not feeling very good about yourself, it can be such a seductive path to walk down because of, you know, the culture tells us that kind of lose weight, feel better. Now, I remember when I was at university, I really identified with being the thin person and people would regularly comment on my weight and I clung to these words such as being called tiny, lean or small, feeling a fleeting self-worth boost when others validated my body for how it looked. But it was fleeting and it often felt wildly incongruent as I often didn't actually feel very good in my body. And I also knew kind of the costs that I was experiencing to kind of maintain this body. Now, while I was getting these compliments, I felt out of control around food. I wasn't able to eat meat my internal standards at all. The cost of looking thin was a day spent obsessing about what I was going to eat or not eat next. It was delaying eating episodes for as long as possible. And then later in the day, hitting breaking point when often stimulated by an alcoholic drink, as is so often part of the student life. And then the willpower to restrict would unravel rapidly and the inevitable binges and out of control eating would ensue. Now, it's a tough call to let go of the external validation and truly begin to build your own self-worth from within. But for me, I began to realise that no amount of praise or positive comments could actually make me feel good. Now, it might boost my mood temporarily, but I would always be like seeking out more. And I'd be concerned as well, like if the validation wasn't happening, you know, did it mean that I'd gained weight? Did I not look good anymore? So the external validation really became pretty meaningless because if someone says you have an amazing body but you've been purging, restricting, hiding in your room or obsessing around food for hours on end, then this comment doesn't really start to count for that much. Sacrificing all integrity and worth for a positive comment from someone often who doesn't even really know you And actually, if they're really commenting on your body in that way, they've probably got their own food issues as well because they're valuing that thinner body so much. So it's not helpful one bit. So that was a big turning point for me, starting to care much less about that external validation of thinness. So that itself kind of gave me permission really to allow myself to do a bit of weight restoration and to get my body back into a happier place. 
So whereas now my body doesn't conform to an ideal aesthetic, you know, objectively I'm not thin, but I'm no longer defined by having to conform to this and to chase the approval of others. And frankly, this is actually pretty liberating and a place of freedom because actually now I don't really have to kind of think about it. I'm not kind of, my worth every day when I get up is not dependent on how I look and whether someone's going to make a comment about how I look. Um, And that's not going to define me anymore. Whereas now my self-worth comes much more from within and that's a much more powerful and empowering place. Okay, so that was number one, caring less about the external validation from others about thinness. Number two, embracing the self-care, self-soothe side of life. Now, I'm a natural striver. I jump out of bed in the morning with a to-do list and I get immense satisfaction from ticking off the list and I can rely far too much on doing as a means of deriving my self-worth. Now, I had to work for my dad from a young age and it was drilled into me pretty young that doing was good. And I think as well, both my mum and dad, um, you know, had a family business and had to work really, really hard. And like self-care, self-soothe, it wasn't really kind of part of the bigger picture. So those messages were drilled into me quite young. But I think as well, just from other things that have happened to me in my life and my personality, I'm someone that tends to kind of embrace all that kind of doing all the time. So my worth has often felt very dependent on how productive I've been. And I've had to work very hard to allow myself to self-soothe, self-care and relax and see this as necessary and valuable. Because in the past, I would often just see myself as being lazy and doing something wrong if I wasn't being productive. Now, when I was in the depths of my eating disorder, food was the only means really of self-soothing. So in the depths of a binge, I could finally escape the world, stop and get off the treadmill of life and switch off from everything for a while. I didn't have to even permit the binge as it was going to happen at some point as the inevitable consequence of restriction. So in a kind of weird way, I was kind of getting my self-care in, in obviously not a very self-caring way, but kind of getting my self-care in without even having to make the kind of conscious decision that I was going to do it. So in a way that kind of made it a bit easier. But outside the binging episodes, I was on a striving mission getting up, over-exercising, working, doing more, fitting in something else, never stopping and actually slowing down to rest, relax or self-care. And what happened was short term, of course I felt extremely satisfied for being so productive, but I was often exhausted and completely spent by the latter part of the week. I didn't want to socialise or do anything fun, as all the energy had been burned up with productivity. So it's been an ongoing journey for me to permit in self-care and rest into my life. Interestingly, having children has almost forced me to have to slow down and reevaluate. Because particularly when they were little, I wanted to be in the moment with them, looking at a beetle in a pavement crack with wonder, or watching a film with them, or drawing, or just kind of being in the moment and spending time with them. But to this day, I have to think about my downtime and really plan it in. It doesn't feel natural or instinctual. And I have to remember the value to my mental well-being of taking time out. And I have to remember that true rest brings creativity and enthusiasm and energy. So I can actually return to the things I enjoy striving for with that kind of renewed energy and kind of, um, yeah, v- v- room to be able to do it. So now I no longer restrict my eating. Food is not the turn to or pinnacle of the day. I might self-care by eating, but I also have other ways of relaxing too, from watching Netflix to reading to listening to podcasts or music, having a relaxing bath, going for a walk, just sitting and chatting with a friend, an early night or just doing nothing at all. So self-care is a valuable part of life now and it really needs balancing alongside my need to strive and be productive. So that was my second point, starting to self-care and embrace that and really permit it into my life. Okay, now my final secret is all about setting boundaries, saying no and finding my voice. And when I was 20, I had lost all sight of who I was. I was adept at being whoever the person in front of me at the time needed to be. Now, 
This created a lot of difficult situations and hurt in my friendships and close relationships. I would twist myself to be the perfect girlfriend who shared all the same interests and was so accommodating. And I was actually just a complete people pleaser. Now, this wasn't a conscious betrayal of others. It was more like a survival mechanism to gain approval and acceptance. I didn't know who I was. And when people told me to love myself or do my own thing, I had zero idea about what that even meant and how to even ever begin. So people pleasing created a lot of inner conflict. And also I did hurt others in the process. Because often internally, I would understandably feel negative emotions for all the pleasing. I'd feel angry, resentful, anxious for not being myself. But then I would dissociate from these feelings using food and I wouldn't really admit to myself how I felt. And the the emotions would often erupt out in outbursts and I might try and binge and purge to try and eliminate them and start a fresh slate. But of course it doesn't work. You know, you might get a temporary relief from your emotions, but nothing that's sustainable. And I also really hurt some people in my life who I cared about because they assumed all was fine and that I was happy because this is what my public face showed. You know, this is what they they couldn't really think anything else. So one day when I couldn't hold the truth in anymore, I would often make then what appeared to others quite drastic decisions as I would call a relationship off seemingly overnight for the other person as I'd never shared my true feelings. And they were also left confused as they'd fallen in love with the people-pleasing version of me rather than the real Harriet. And this was a shock and caused a great deal of hurt. Then, of course, I would feel guilty for letting the person down. I would feel wrong for showing my true feelings. And then I would often repeat the whole process again with someone new. So this has been a real journey for me in people-pleasing less. Having personal boundaries and learning to say no. It's also been a real journey to listen to all my emotions and to work on them. So rather than ignoring negative emotions and then them spewing out in a barrage of hurtful negativity, which could be damaging to myself and others, I've had to actually kind of get in touch with those emotions and feel them and deal with them in constructive ways. Now, when we don't have boundaries, it's like us having a house with no fence or defining line. People come into the garden and will just trample all over your flowers or weeds because there's no defining boundary between what is yours and what is theirs. So if you don't set boundaries, others will often quite unconsciously and happily trample. So you haven't set limits, so people don't know where your limits are. Um, But once you actually set limits, people can start to respect those because they know, you know, they know what's okay and what's not okay. Now, I used to be so terrified of not pleasing or setting boundaries as I thought I'd be rejected. And I also struggled with intense, irrational guilt about not doing what others wanted. And this was a paralysing situation for me because I felt I just couldn't win. Because I was either pleasing than feeling resentful and losing myself, or I was not pleasing but feeling guilt that almost felt too much to bear. In time, though, I've realised that my guilt response was based on trauma and was not a healthy one to follow through with. And guess what? Setting boundaries has truly been liberating. Others actually like to know where the boundary line is. It's much more straightforward rather than, than this kind of ambiguity of not really knowing how the other person feels. And others are often very accepting of your limits and offer you much more respect due to the boundaries. So people-pleasing is disingenuous and fake. In the short term, the benefits of twisting yourself to please inevitably backfire. And also you just lose a little more of yourself every time you please rather than follow your heart. Excuse me, croaky voice. So well beyond my eating disorders symptoms ending, my work on this area has been ongoing. And over time, I feel I've come to know myself with my strengths and limitations. I know what I need in my life to feel good. I'm better now at communicating with others and saying no. And I'm willing to not be liked rather than completely compromising myself and my integrity. So this last secret, starting to set boundaries, saying no and finding my voice, has definitely been the most powerful changing secret for me. And my belief is that the core of eating disorders is often not feeling enough, not feeling acceptable and kind of losing your true voice in who you are. 
And the true healing comes when we start to embrace all of these parts of ourselves again and to genuinely walk our own path. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode today and I hope it's perhaps given you some thoughts to think about. Again, of course, your journey will be different, but I hope it will help you reflect on your own journey and think about the things that are working for you. So if you're not following me already, do seek me out on Instagram at The Eating Disorder Therapist. And for regular tips and insights into overcoming disordered eating, do sign up for my weekly blog articles at rethinkyourbody.co.uk. Thank you so much for listening and I look forward to sharing another podcast episode with you very soon.